Okay, so. with those issues. So one Or wherever. Okay. Great. This is the mic for recording and remote participant purposes. Um, yeah. Could I get on? I don't need to do a slide. I wouldn't mind just showing the website, basically. Uh, let's see. But I don't need this microphone. Eh? I can I can yell. <coughs> Yeah, that'll work. Great. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Nico, Nico Koenig. I work with Peer to Peer University or P2PU. Um, this is our website, but and it might be distracting, so I might turn it off later on, but here it is. You can take a look at it if you like. Um, I'm pretty interested in, I think a lot about this idea of uh, anyone can learn anything online anywhere for free. You know, you probably saw that somewhere. It's like, you can learn anything, anywhere, online for free. And I thought a lot about that. And, you know, because obviously you're, we're all here thinking that there's some, there's a little bit of truth to that, 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 you know, there is a huge opportunity for people to learn online. There's so many resources that people could access if they wanted to. Um, and then so we were thinking about this slogan, this slogan my organization, Peter P.U., because it used to be our slogan, actually. It, used to, it actually used to be Peter to use that slogan that anyone can learn any, anything anywhere online. But we, we came to a, a, a truth, which is learning that way is inaccessible for a lot of people. Um, very few people, we believe, have the support, the social support, the motivation, the time, 
the digital literacy skills, and a place in their area where they can access internet um, regularly to be able to access those online courses. So for a long time, P2P or uh, university pushed an, uh, an idea of online learning and accessible education, and we're still pushing that model, but we decided to switch. Um, um, so we made a change in specific, specifically directed towards local organizations. And we started thinking, well, what organization is really interested in people's learning is a, there's a, that is all over the world, um, that is in a, in, available in a local accessible way, um, that has space and it has access to the internet. And we thought, wow, the public library system. Whoa, brain, amazing. So we, we started working with the libraries, the public library system. So the libraries are absolutely ripe for this type of work in terms of blending and, and supporting people to access online learning. They are, one, looking for an opportunity to transition away from just a place where books are stored and not just for a place where computers are stored, but actually towards a place that's a community learning hub in their local area. Librarians are super psyched to get to do this. And also they have all those other things that I just mentioned. Internet, tablets, um, people from your local area that can support you. They, already, they, they have all these librarians who are ready to help people as facilitators. So we started working with, we switched the model, working online only to, to seeing if we could work with uh, librarians. And we started working in Chicago a couple years ago, Chicago Public Library. Um, and since then, we started, now we're working with about 40 different library systems across the states, now also in Toronto Public Library here uh, in Europe, and also specifically nation coverage in Kenya. We're working with the Kenyan National Library Service. And all these organizations are doing one thing. They, they're trying to, they, they brought our model, which was basically what we call a learning circle model. And we support librarians to be facilitators to, you, to create these learning circles, which are peer, lightly facilitated, peer-led study groups. It's an old model. It's maybe the oldest style of education. Study circles, study groups where people come together. There's no, no content expert. And the content is, is found not from books anymore, but it's from online courses. And the, the online open courses are there for use as a catalyst for these, uh, these study groups or learning circles to meet um, for six to eight weeks once a week in their local library. So that's what we call a learning circle. So we switched the models to working with learning circle models. Now what we found with working with all these different libraries and if you can take a look, if you're on the website, Peter P, you can see all these different places that are people are, or where people are running learning circles. Wichita, San Jose, um, Miami. Uh, you, there's a number of different great library systems that are doing this. One thing we found from our early work with Chicago was that 90% of people who were doing these learning circles had never taken online courses before. This was a model that worked for them. So because it was in an in-person area, there was social supports available, there was someone helping them through taking this online course um, together and meeting their goals specifically. Retention, I, I know some of you know that online courses now, I mean, I don't know what the statistic is now, but we're talking about like 5%, at least some MOOCs, at least that's the stat I heard, of people who can, will stay with a course. People who are doing learning circles, well, of course you're meeting in the same place, you're meeting your friend, your new friend now, well, you want to hang out with them. We're talking about you want to stay connected in the local area and stay connected with people that they meet. And the course hopefully will support that. We're talking about rates of 50, 60, 70%. Now we're working in Kenya. People are taking courses. They're, they're, we're going 95% of people who are starting a course and lasting eight weeks all together um, doing in this, using this learning circle model. Um, People are achieving their goals because this is this model, a study group model, at the end of the day is mostly, is very focused on what are your needs, what are your goals that you're trying to meet, what are your learning goals specifically, and how can we all achieve that? So they're, they're, they're achieving all sorts of different goals, whether that is specifically going into a new career, professional development, um, as a stepping stone into formal education, all sorts of different goals like that, that um, that depends on what they're trying to do out of the learning circle. Um, and, and libraries are gaining a, a huge thing from this as well. Libraries are offering a huge a new array of programs, highly technical, um, highly diverse numbers of programs that they were not, not able to offer before. And they're also bringing in new people to the library system, which they're excited about as well. So with PWU, what do we do? Well, we have an online system that I, we call it a dashboard where you can post your learning circle. Anyone, this is open source software. Anyone can post their learning circle for free. Um, 
it, it creates a web, a, a web registration, then anybody can register for that, and then you can have a communication with anybody who signs up and the person who is hosting it, uh, so you can send messages to each other. We have trained supports for how to run learning circles and also how to be a facilitator because this is not a model that you need to be an expert in these online courses. You're here to host questions, host discussions, and support people in their learning goals. Um, we have a community of about 150 librarians and educators, um, and that's just emerged over the past year. People who are discussing, well, what course works well for this topic? How do, what open course is ideal for HTML? These type of, what, how do I... How do I help my learners know that I'm not the teacher, I'm a facilitator? What works best for my community? These are discussions that are happening in our, on our forum. Um, um, and we're also, we're really, we're really pushing for open access to courses. A few little anecdotes. In Kenya right now, they were starting to, they found a course, I think it was on Coursera, on community journalism. And then all of a sudden, the course was gone. <laughs> you know, some courses just disappear sometimes. They're not really available all the time. And so, we and also these Kenyan librarians advocated for, to find the person who developed the course, to find the content, and they went around Coursera to access this content specifically. And we've had a number of different areas like, uh, like that where librarians are becoming little advocates for finding who created the content and asking them to open it up for their, their group. Um, so what we're doing right now with, um, with organizations like you, like OERU, is we're trying to figure out, we have about, you know, if you take a look, you can um, go to facilitate, and actually, I'll, I'll just show you right now while I'm here. Um, this is in Boston Public Library. So we, ha we just created this new site. It's not a dumping ground with like millions of courses. These are courses that have been listed, that have been run mostly as learning circles, and I'll just show you quickly. Um, you know, some of our most popular courses, uh, English le language learning, HTML, fundamentals of public speaking, writing fiction, and we're trying to host courses that are high quality and that work for groups. And these are all courses that we know have been run in learning circles. Uh, and we wanna, we wanna host courses like uh, Learning in a Digital Age, Project Management, courses that will work for people that they can adapt to their own communities and host them on our site for people to use. So if you wanna start a learning circle, you can go ahead today, you can start a learning circle right now, it's, it's free, go ahead, it's all yours. Um, if you have a course that you, you want to you um, offer to a new audience, to a, a diverse audience, um, to a, an audience you would not normally reach out to because you're, you're pu putting all your information online, then we have people that are ready to take that and we can introduce your course content to that audience through the library systems. Um, if you are creating a system right now which is amazing for people to get into accreditation program from taking learning circles then we want to we want to work with you we're really interested in solving that issue as well and supporting people as stepping stones into formal education um, and also I'll be speaking about uh, academic volunteers international because we think that this model um, we're coming at the other end and we want we want to support you with a different audience and bring what you're creating to the people across the world in these libraries so talk to you then so thank you very much, Nico. Um, I mean, we've been working and having conversations with the amazing team at Peer to Peer, you, Nico, Griff, and um, and Dirk, uh, and and so we're we're going to be prototyping with the Learning in a Digital Age course, and ha you know, having a look to see how we might be able to implement you know the Learning Circle approach within the OERU context and helping to scale the initiative, you know, to other countries as well. Um, you know, I can imagine all the public libraries in New Zealand, for, for example, would be very interested in working in this space. So lastly, um, and so this is obviously a bit of a, a tease around the sort of the learning support angle. And lastly, I would like to ask Adrian Stagg from USQ to come brief us the work that he's been leading around the OERU Quality Review Project. Thank you very much, Wayne, um, and thanks for the opportunity to, uh, to talk to you about this work. Uh, now, unfortunately, um, given what we've just heard from peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, university, I've, I'm finding increasingly as I get more interested in quality and policy that these are the less exciting topics. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> we'll, we'll end with them.
So I've got three quick things to do in my five minutes. The first one is to expand on Dave Lane's um, uh, Lego analogy from this morning. The second one is to talk about quality standards. And then the third one is my shameless plug to allow you to do a shameless plug. Okay, so first of all, um, to set the scene with, with, uh, with the Lego, because I think that, that it is a good analogy. Uh, what you might not know is that a number of years ago, Lego was actually seriously considering filing for bankruptcy. Um, because they, they simply could not maintain the sales. Uh, they just weren't reaching their target audience. What they realized um, after employing a huge market research company and paying them millions and millions of dollars is that essentially um, they, they found out what any five-year-old could have told them, which is when you sell a box of Lego, you don't sell a car with one figure in it. Um, you sell a car and a figure and maybe a motorbike in it because what people want to do is they want to take this this material and they want to tell their own stories with them. Um, so hence, what you'll now figure out, what turned the entire company around was now packaging things up so that what you now have is you might have a helicopter with a guy in a helicopter and then a guy or a girl with a briefcase. And then suddenly we've got, well, what stories could we tell if we have a helicopter, somebody who looks like maybe a federal agent or something and then somebody with a mysterious briefcase. And it's allowing people to take that and tell their own stories. Okay, that's what turned a company like Lego around. And that's where, where I sort of position open this in my head is that we provide all of the pieces and we allow people then to, to make their own stories, tell their own narrative around their discipline, those sorts of things. So in that, in that um, notion there, um, one of the things that, that did start to, to sort of rattle around in my brain was the notion of consistency across um, OERU courses. And this is something that I spoke to Wayne about at the regional partners meeting last year. I'm going to be very careful about my use of terminology here that consistency okay, is very different to conformity. Uh, whenever I go into faculty and I talk about consistency, I end up with lots of people getting very angry with me um, until I explain the difference between the two. So consistency, which is what I'm looking for, is that it can manifest however you possibly want, but there's a consistency of experience. Okay, we don't tell you how to do things, certainly not the pedagogical approach, certainly not the look and feel, but there are certain elements that are consistent across courses. These are the kinds of things that we are trying to identify. And the outcomes of this working group are to come up with both um, a guide, whether or not we, uh, will, we most likely will be repurposing, revising, remixing a range of current uh, tools that are out there. Things like the Achieve tool, the eCampus, Alberta, uh, one as well, and also one that we've got at USQ. We've just kind of been gathering examples and looking for points of commonality. So that can be used in two ways. One, if you're going to be running a brand new course or designing a new course, this essentially provides you with a bit of a blueprint to say, let's make sure that we include these kinds of things. Okay, how they manifest, completely up to you. On the flip side of that, if you want to take a look at a course and do some sort of a review, evaluation, or the like, uh, then you've got something, a yardstick against which to measure, and then it becomes a discussion document. Uh, the way that we use a lot of this at USQ is that we don't say that just because you didn't score in a particular area or there wasn't evidence that you're a bad teacher. That's absolutely not it. What, what we flag that is, is point for discussion. So we say to people, well, is this something that, that would suit your cohort? Is it something that suits your students, your teaching style, your discipline? Um, and we try to, try to drill down into that nuance. So they're going to be the main things that we're working on, as well as a user guide for really how do you, how do you implement this? How can you take this, reuse, repurpose it? Because everything will be openly licensed. Um, and then we're, we're very open to the idea that we might uh, be able to get a bit of research around this as well, uh, but we're going to see how it evolves. Uh, at the moment, there's a, there's a few folk who are involved in this. But this afternoon, if you are interested, um, I would highly welcome anyone who, who wanted to get involved um, and, and contribute. Now, the last thing that I promised you was shameless plug so that you can do a shameless plug. I spoke to, to Wayne before lunch. Now, I host an open educational practice podcast, which is called The Other 50 Weeks, uh, 50 spelt out F-I-F-T-Y, uh, on Podbean. And what I try to do 
is it's acting as a way of one, promoting really good work that's happening out there and open, um, but also serving as an additional part of the digital record um, of the open movement. Now, due to personal illness, it's laying fallow for the last couple of months. It will be reinvigorated within the next two weeks. I've got some people lined up, but if any of you are doing anything at all and you'd like to be on an episode, um, you'd like to be interviewed about what you're doing or if, you've got, if you want to talk philosophy, anything at all, um, then please get in contact with me. My details will be up on the, the Wiki Educator site for, for this meeting. Reach out to me um, and uh, I'll certainly slot you in. I do have some recording equipment with me here, so if people wanted to do something over lunch or a group discussion, we can do that. I'm pretty flexible, okay? So if you want to get the word out, research, practice, anything, let me know. Okay, but the main thing that we'll focus on this afternoon is, of course, the quality work. Thank you very much, Wayne. <laughs> yeah, I just want to get the agenda back on. Right. For those of you that this is your, if this is your first OER you meeting, typically what we do, we have these breakout sessions where each of the, uh, the breakouts work on what we call a proposal for action, um, which is really in terms of the planning sprint methodologies, a first draft of, you know, taking the ideas, uh, ideas forward. So we potentially have, um, well, we have potentially have uh, four groups, but it looks as though the whole question of restructuring uh, the, or the reorganization of the OERU is not a popular topic. Uh, we, we had one, uh, one. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. So that's a viable group. Um, I just want to check is uh, we do have a marketing group, uh, which will be the marketing professionals. We're going to be working throughout the meeting, working on the marketing brief. Uh, anybody who, uh, other than the marketing professionals who want to join the marketing group? Yep. So we've got two, and I will certainly join the first session just to share the kinds of collateral we already have so that you've got all that information. Right. So that's a viable group. The learning support uh, stuff, which is really looking well, you know, to what extent we can implement uh, learning circles from peer to peer U, Academic Volunteers International, and other great ideas for furthering Academic Volunteers International. So we, yeah, so we've got a viable group there. And those wanting to chat and talk a bit about the quality review project and how we can go about improving quality, quality and consistency. Yes, yeah, so we do have a viable group. Right, so then um, each, each of the groups does have a, a, a document li linked. Um, again, the same password, OER for All Toronto. Uh, in some cases, there are seed questions. In others, uh, you, you, you will populate. Um, and then we'll take report back at um, yeah it's, uh, we'll we'll report back around about ten past three uh, there or thereabouts okay okay so shall shall we have the we're the most quality people sitting over there Sh shall we have the quality group there? Big table, quality group, big table. Uh, the organizational structures with David um, at David's table. The marketing, we'll stay at the marketing table here in the middle. And the other one is the, perhaps the learner support, learning circles, academic volunteers international here. Okay. <clears throat> 